Hey, I'm Issa Rae, and today I'm gonna be answering old questions with new answers. Let's see what I was talking about. What sticks out to you as a major highlight filming your show? I remember back then it was just about being able to shoot with my friends and just make something, make something that people liked. Is that my ex-boyfriend? Hey, oh, oh D. Yo, what's, what's up? Hey. This is so funny. I thought you and my boy Reggie combined, but you came a little closer and it's not Reggie. Like to have people come up to me and say, I am an awkward black girl too, is incredibly amazing. And now even with Insecure, the highlights are just telling these stories, these real stories from people in the room, from my life, from my friends' lives. It's really rewarding to have people relate to what you make. Okay, now this is 2011 Issa Rae. <sighs> what did I say? Let's go back. Being able to meet Donald Glover, that was the best thing ever. Yeah, it sounds superficial indeed. But yeah, that's that's all I can think of right now. <laughs> okay, um, I was super hype about Donna Glover. I'm still a massive fan and think that he's just you know a genius and has done so much since then. You know that was 2011, and I don't. I think maybe he was on Community, but before then, you know, I followed his career with Derek Comedy and seeing his movie Mystery Team and all these things that he had done online before that. And his music, his early mixtapes, his freestyles. So I just thought like, this is, he's so cool in, in terms of exploring everything and um, doing it really well and getting better. So I, I hold to that. I'm constantly inspired by, you know, people that I consider peers, people that I consider heroes, uh, peer and heroes together. I love that it's not competitive. Like there's, I'm always gonna be a competitive person with myself, but for me, I'll look at other people whose work I like and it just makes me wanna step my game up. And there's just something special about being a part of this time where we can look to each other and not tear each other down, but just be like, damn, you're doing that? Shit, what else can I do then? Since you've done so much work that's pretty autobiographical, I'm wondering where you draw the line between yourself and her, meaning Issa, as a character. I started off saying that with Insecure, in particular, Issa D was a younger version of me who just kind of didn't know what she wanted to do. But now as the series has progressed, I find that we're merging more in our career aspirations and our love for the city. I'm being more influenced by her, which is weird. Okay, let's take it back to 2016. She's basically me if I didn't know what I wanted to do. And if I made different decisions in life, I say 75 to 80%. I think I'm a bit more empathetic than she is. And I like to say that I wouldn't put my friends on blast in the way that she did in the pilot, but I probably have. I didn't tell any lies. This is 2016. So yeah, 2016 me, I was still close-ish to her age. So 75 to 80%, it feels right. It took some time for Insecure to get from development to HBO. What do you think was the most important thing throughout that process to protect or preserve? Throughout the development process for HBO, I just remember being really impatient because I had come from the internet and I was like, why is this taking so long? Like I could create this in two minutes and it'll be out there and I think people will like it. But thinking about where the show started and where it ended up. I'm so happy we took that time. I'm so happy that things played out the way that they did. It ended up making a better show, a show that I'm super, super, super proud of. It really just taught me the rewriting process in a way that I just hadn't experienced before. I probably did about either seven to nine drafts. I have to go back in my email for Insecure and the show started off as a uh, nonprofit. It was more of a workplace uh, show with the personal life stuff on the side. And the Molly character was kind of on the side too and whatever love interest I had at the time. And the more we were developing it, the side characters just really started to shine and HBO wanted to see more of that. Like, tell us more about your best friend. Uh, uh, yes, Lawrence, how you doing, babe? Actually, I'm thinking about ending things with Lawrence. I'm sorry, what was that? Casey Bloys, who was an executive then, was just like, what does it look like for your Laverne, Sh Laverne and Shirley show with, with, with Molly? And with that in mind, I kind of just reconceptualized what the show would be. Let's see what 2016 Issa was talking about. 
The two most important things were that it was set in South Los Angeles and that we highlighted Inglewood, Baldwin Hills, all these places where I grew up and knew. Girl, what was you talking about? I don't know. I don't know that I answered the question accurately the first time. Maybe I was still like, there was still an impatient residue left where I was like, well, at least we got to highlight my hood. But I don't know. I don't know what I was talking about. It has been extremely important to showcase South LA, to showcase Inglewood. When I was writing the show and filming it, I lived in Inglewood at the time and it was just, you know, my grandparents uh, lived there all my life and so it just was very special to me. It was proposed a couple of times to save time and money to like shoot in the valley or shoot in other places and fake it in South Los Angeles and I just felt like that defeated the purpose of shooting there. You can't fake these locations. There's something about being there that, that feels real. And the entire point was to showcase that particular, those particular neighborhoods. How has the definition of awkward changed for you over the course of your life? I still abide by the same definition of awkward. I think what's changed is just, I've recognized that it's just a part of who I am and I don't sweat it as much anymore. I'm lying, I do sweat it, but I just I just don't let it outwardly affect me as much. And I've understood that everybody is, whether they think they are or not, awkward to some degree. Let's take it back to 2014. I think in my younger days, middle school, high school, it was more of a stigma. I wanted to be like everyone else, and I didn't really want to stand out in a way that was weird or uncool. It wasn't until I got older where I was able to embrace my awkwardness. That's real shit. In middle school, high school, for whatever reason, me along and Laura Winslow <laughs> was like the type of black girl I wanted to be. If I could just be a mixture, I would, I would be killing it. So um, shout out to the two of them for being role models. What was your big aha moment in the business? I guess I'm just more hip to how and why things are made and who is kind of in charge of saying yes. But the politics of this business have just become more clear to me in a way that I could at least intentionally like go around and avoid making things that the studio system thinks is like great or popping. Mind you, I like I'm, I'm, I'm a business person and I don't want to make things that suck and that won't sell, but I do want to make things that are are very true to me. And I have found that while Hollywood is like, we love original voices, we love originality, all those things, uh, they really don't. So it's like just about finding those people who do appreciate that and who are willing to take risks. Now this is 2012 Issa Rae. The aha moment for me was when I got representation. I was taking all these meetings during the day and they interfered with my job and I couldn't just like I was getting all these interviews and I was like, it's time to leave this job. It's not helping me in any way. My dumb ass, when was this? 2012. 2012, because I got, <laughs> I thought representation meant like, oh, I get an agent and manager. Money's just about to start coming in. Woo, finally, it's happened for me. And I quit my job and was broke as fuck. So this was not an aha moment. This was a very dumb moment for me. It worked out, but I should have held on to it a little longer to save because, woo, there was a struggle. Before you quit your job, you should have savings, you should have a plan, and also make sure that you have a support system, whether that's your friends or a team in place to help you make stuff. You have to have accountability partners to, to keep you on track. What's an average day been like for you lately? How do you organize your time between your various projects? An average day for me is usually, it depends on whether I'm filming or not. When I'm filming, you know, 15 to 16 hours of my day are dedicated to that. And I have no schedule. When I'm not, I usually, you know, wake up early in the morning, go for a walk. And then whether it's a Monday, Wednesday or Friday, I write, I'm creative in some capacity, and if it's a Tuesday and Thursday, then I'm doing all the work meetings, business stuff that I have to do. And then weekends are usually for either shoots or free time. Let's take it back to 2014. I set aside two days in the week for meetings. 
and four days in the week for creative work, writing, producing, shooting, etc. I leave my evenings and at least one weekend day for family and friendship time, but no day is the same, and I honestly have no idea how I really get stuff done. A6 changed. Barring the pandemic, uh, I have been able to like try to spend time with family and friends. I think I probably gave this answer after I had struggled with time management. Like there was a year that passed where I realized I was only taking business meetings and trying to you know, make money and advance my career and I hadn't done anything new or creative. And so I think after that moment, I was like, you know what, let me have a regimented schedule. Then I got too busy and was like, let me make time for family and friends. Now I feel like I've, I have a good balance. How do you know who and what to let go of? And how do you know who to bring into your circle? I've always been, especially now, I just don't like negative people. I just, I can't stand pessimism. Like I will do that on my own. So I don't need you to add to it. I don't like yes people by any means, but I, I like realists, but I don't like people who just go to the worst case scenario. Cause then I'm gonna be in my head. So I, I think it's just been about weeding people out who just have a lot of negativity in their own lives. If you can't help yourself, then I can't help you either. Let's check out you in 2015. My experience has taught me that these things kind of work themselves out in a sense, you know? Like when you reach a certain level, you realize that some people aren't ready to go there with you, or you realize that some people are ready to take on more responsibilities. But as you're going through the trenches together, people kind of fall off. And I've experienced that in many parts of the journey. Yeah, that's true too. I will say that this version of me was kind of less confrontational about actively removing people from my life. It was more like, oh, they'll just fall off. But now I'm, I'm more intentional about distancing myself from certain people just because it's better for my mental health and not feeling bad about it. Okay, last question. What's your advice to this version of yourself? If I could go back in time and give advice to my younger self, it would definitely be stop trying so hard to be someone you're not. Stop trying so hard, period. You don't have to. If people don't like you for who you are, then those people aren't meant to be in your life. You don't want them there anyway. So stop trying to impress people by being someone you're not. What advice would you give to this Issa? Um, I would tell 2015 Issa, first of all, clean your room and your apartment. Like, don't be making no videos and shit is cluttered. Two, just stop comparing yourself to others. Stop comparing your own journey to others. I know during that time, I was really thinking like, you know, why isn't this happening for me? Why is stuff taking so long? Is it ever gonna happen? Is this all that I have? And that came from comparing my journey to other people's journeys. Yeah, I, I still stand by that as well. But this was very painful to watch. <laughs> Thank you for taking this trip down memory lane with me. If I could give you one piece of advice, I would say everything takes time. Uh, everything's on your time. Your journey is your own. So just ride with it. <laughs>